what we got from online jama'ah, inshaAllah mashaAllah somebody sent some pictures or, or jama'ah were great, they were wearing the SMC and, and going to different majlises, sitting in the front rows, very nice, very beautiful. Get your SMC uh, stuff and go out in other people's associations, be proud of it, show it and be everywhere. Because you go places, oh you're with Shaykh Nurchan because they, they watch the videos. You know it's like the people have like a closet love, they're hiding it, why are you hiding it for? Get out there and show it, that becomes your struggle inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum dear shaykh Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah So if a person is subjected to constant humiliation, is it because we are still a strong one? And does the humiliation start diminishing as we move towards being zero? InshaAllah. <laughs> yeah, the, <clears throat> the tougher the steak, the more the grinding, right? Everyone's got to be hamburger. <laughs> but some people come, oh I'm T-bone. I'm prime rib, I'm, I'm a very special person. Do you know my dreams, Shaykh? You want to tell me my dreams? You want me to tell you your, my dreams? I said, no, I don't want to hear your dreams. Already you're big enough. You want to tell me now you see the whole universe at your feet? I'm not interested. Means, yes, everybody comes to the way thinking themselves to be great. So we find in our lives the, the grinders rolling. So depending upon how much we have of arrogance, how much we have of pride, how many edges on our stone needs to be polished, then the polishing begins. So in our life, again because we have a lot of Eastern emails coming for people whom are oppressed. So we clarified oppression versus humiliation and humility. Oppression, you don't have the means to defend yourself or protect yourself. So Eastern cultures may be aggressive against certain people, women and children. They're going to start emailing and keep saying, yeah, this is my test of humility. No, this is oppression. You make du'a Allah answers the du'a of oppressed people. Humiliation is you're, you got resources, you have strength, you have ability to speak, nobody's going to harm you, they're just going to agitate you and you choose for Allah's sake. I'm going to stay quiet. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Or I'm not going to be combative and I'm not going to be aggressive. Means Allah says, you had a choice and as a result of your choice you, you submitted and you turned your affair over to Allah and you keep trying to keep the peace, keep trying to keep and make peace because if you open your mouth it will go out of control everywhere. So you try to keep muslihoon where Allah loves the one whom makes peace. So. That becomes very clear. If we're coming new to tariqah, well we're coming like you know very big stakes, we're, we're, we're this, you know, I'm a big fish in my small pond. But now when you're coming to Allah's ocean that has infinite capacity, it's very difficult for people to feel that ocean of nothingness. You know they had all these plans, all these aspirations, all these hopes, all these, these titles for themselves. And to be put into Allah's oceans of uh, infinite grace and, and infinite size, you become infinitely small in that ocean.
So the state of annihilation is not easy for people. So continuous humiliation, they feel, oh this is embarrassing, oh this is embarrassing. We said before in our path we, we came you know with the, the best of clothes, the best of uh, lifestyles, the best of everything and we went to a zikr and they, uh, they convinced me to, to dress a different way and they took me to go buy uh, slippers that you would wear for the toilet. <laughs> the wash area, yeah, it's very funny plastic ones. So you have to wear that everywhere. I said, really? I gotta wear these things everywhere? <laughs> so yeah, so I put that on. They went and got me shower kameez but I guess it was like an almost see-through shower kameez, <laughs> very cheap one. And I put okay. the shower kameez and I went home. And my mom almost killed me. <laughs> what the heck is this? What's this look? He said, I said, this is it. <laughs> I've denounced the world. <laughs> So it was there, it was very hu humiliating. And so I started to walk all, <laughs> all over the West LA like that. So, you know, <laughs> there's going to be a big change in people's lives, and they can deem that to be humility. And then, alhamdulillah, when, when I met Mawlana, he's like, You don't have to do that. You, you can dress <laughs> like this, you can wear the Sunnah, Turkish style, nice suits, nice this. So, it means that there's always going to be a change from our background and into something new and we deem that to be humiliating or humbling and whatever it is you go through that process. But the arrogance and pride that people may have and, and never knew that it existed then those have to be brought down and they may think that this is a continuous humiliation. But that's you know unique to each person's case in life what they think or what they deem is humiliation and how much they're willing to sort of be patient and humble themselves and, and, and all the different characteristics to sit amongst people, to not show your title to people and then everybody assuming that, oh this, these people that sit with the shaykh they're nobodies. No, they come from various backgrounds and, and, and various educations and it's not that they took a path in which to efface themselves and humble themselves. So this is a, a lifelong process. Once we learn that and then we carry that forward in everything that we do in our lives. That we're humble at work, we're humble with uh, community members and, and people. And Allah loves the, the humble character inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah so if we have a dream about someone else that is beautiful, should we tell them or not? No, no we just started yeah. with that. Yeah, because yeah, that, that, that can make a sickness for the ego that the ego wants us to be recognized. So remember the ego is trying to sit on the chair and if it's battling with three it comes to you and says that, look your soul sitting on the chair and making everything very bad for us, let me sit on the chair and handle you for a little bit. As soon as the ego sits on the chair it wants to do something to get you recognized because you all of a sudden sit in a group and start saying, you know I had a dream about you doing like this and this. That no longer is a soul sitting on the chair because the soul says, I got private information from Allah just for the sake of my inspiration. But the ego when he took the chair he now got identified and now everybody start coming in the room say, oh did you, did you dream about me and then, oh now you may have a special status, do you do this all the time, you dream all the time? And now you can see now the ego took the chair and loves it, this is great. And then I'll start making up some dreams and people will come even more and sit around and, and try to get an inspiration from me. So anything that we think would potentially identify us is to restrain from it. And the, the exception is the shaykh has to use the tools that was given to him for guidance. And it's not for, for bragging, it's not for, for anything other than people to come for guidance. But when others do it and they're not the shaykh, you're drawing attention to your chair, right? So out of the understanding of the chair, anytime the soul sits on the chair it doesn't want any attention. So something that should have got a lot of attention if the soul can get onto the chair actually will go completely unnoticed because the soul will make the chair to be not recognized at all. 
So they can have immense spiritual experience. If the soul sitting on the chair, nobody left and right would know what happened. So those are the, the characteristics of the soul sitting on the chair. That it extremely humbled, extremely uh, uh, sort of effacing of, of itself and, and puts itself within difficulties amongst people. Then you know the soul is on that person that goes into situations. It's a many stories of awliya that people would come and, and curse at them, yell at them, throw things at them and they would stay quiet and stay quiet and say nothing. And then when they were sick that person would go to visit them. They say, what are you coming here for? Oh every year, every day I was coming and bothering you for where you were working and throwing things at you. And that soul comes and says, well today I heard you're sick, I'm coming to see how you're doing. And the person starts to cry. This is the shaykh, uh, Imam of the Budala, they wrote his, one of his stories and qissas. That he was bothered by a lot of people but always remained very humble. And when somebody who bothered all the time got sick, he heard he got sick, he went there to see him and visit him. And he was so ashamed that you're coming to see me and all I did was to bother you. And he's crying and crying and crying and, and asked for repentance and accepted him as his shaykh. So it means that these are the incredible examples of when the soul sits on the chair, it's something completely different. And that's when it's, it's most important is to get the soul to sit on the chair and make sure that the ego is not sitting on the chair. So in a life event we have, just ask yourself, who would benefit on this chair if I was to do that? The soul? No. Would the ego benefit? Definitely. Shaitan? Definitely because shaitan will now start to use that and start to propagate to people, inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam As you had just mentioned, uh, we want to fight for this way and for our shaykh, so can we defend this way or better to keep silent? Defend this way? No, you have to fight for yourself. I gave the example as the shaykh is that I have 25 years of fighting. That each step of the way there was somebody, there's videos of it was so intense in the tariqah <coughs> that Shaykh Nozim had to release a video that this new Muhammad website is authorized, his books are authorized that he has ijazah and, and, and poop on their heads if they talk. They had to release a video because so much attacks. So this was our struggle, this is our struggle. The student has to uphold the understanding that, hey I want to be like my shaykh and I want to struggle. So I want to wear my identifying image because I identify with my shaykh and I want to carry that with me. I want to send out his videos, they're about love, we're not talking any aggression. And these people don't like videos of love. But something sick in them, doesn't hurt anyone, you don't belligerent, you don't lose your character, you don't start yelling and screaming, you merely share the video. And when they talk you share Qur'an, don't open your mouth and start typing bad things, right? When, when they start making bad comments, take Ayatul Kareem from ChatGPT, <laughs> Ch ask ChatGPT. Which eyes of Qur'an address bad character and brrr, and then post those to the group <laughs> and let the Qur'an speak to them. That way you save yourself from typing bad things and saying bad, then you entered in now into shaitan's abode. Mm. And you know you let the, the videos talk for themselves, the, the Qur'an will talk to them, hadith will talk to them. Some of our guys post hadith back and say, what do you mean? The, the seeking of knowledge was mandatory in the hadith and it was the highest abode. And that the angels all the way to the fish in the ocean praise the one whom seeks divinely knowledges. So yeah, it's a part of education because when we were doing it for our shaykh, we had to educate ourselves because our fights were against the Wahhabis. So our, our life was continuous that. The shaykh would send me to conferences for Wahhabis and say, go make a booth for salawats. Well, Wahhabis they completely don't allow and, and don't agree with the salawat and nasheeds. And this was 30 years ago, 25 years ago. As soon as we put on the booth, we put the salawats, they would come to attack and try to be physical. And we say, oh, oh, oh you can't touch here, this is America, you can't <laughs> do these things. 
and they would call security, they would call all sorts of things just to stop it. So life was a continuous struggle. Then publish all his Wahhabi books, anti-Wahhabi books. We would take them to conferences in tens of thousands and distribute them against the Wahhabi movement. And it was a great struggle because the, the surface of, of Islam changed in America as a result of those books and, and those teachings and the ability not to stay quiet. Because the, the mass majority of Muslims said, oh just let them stay quiet, who cares what these Wahhabis say and they basically destroyed the deen. It's, they made everything to be haram, everything to be forbidden. So we took the books, we put them out, we take flyers, put them out, he would put the magazines, we all would distribute the magazines around the country. They were sending them to the people in Vancouver, they were sending them to everywhere. So this was the system is you had something to believe in and something you had to struggle for. But now people are bizarre that, why do we have to struggle? Why, why, why is like this shaykh? What was this, is no, no peace? Does something must be wrong? I said, no, your understanding got lazy. You made it like it's McDonald's drive through You have to struggle for something in life to get a reward from Allah Otherwise why are Allah going to reward you for that day? I tried to keep my faith, I tried to keep the, the practices and the belief that I had and I have in the overwhelming tide of negativity and tried to bring people towards the light inshaAllah. Otherwise you stay quiet then the darkness just overtakes everything. Until the people of light they're all quiet and the darkness is everywhere. Our life is about lighting a match in every room. As soon as there's a darkness somewhere just put a match and a light, what, what is the power of light? No matter how dark it is all it needs is one piece of light. The miracle of light is that it moves and dissipates in its space, right? And the black and the darkness can't overtake it, can't shut the light out. That's why shaitan then encourages you, stop it, stop it, go away. You say, no, I'm here to put the light, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, we see those who mentally torture others why are they so happy in their lives? Mentally tortured others? <laughs> yeah, uh, give, give it time. <laughs> then Allah is, is the, the best of those who keep a hisab. And what you understand of, of people being happy and what the reality is completely different. So only now through social media they'll talk about all oh, these people, oh, this was an influencer, this was like this, this was like this. And they later reveal, no this person actually was very sick, mentally tormented, had social problems, family problems, suicidal problems throughout their family. So we don't know what, what Allah is doing on the, on the side, what, what's happening to people's lives and, and the sense that they have no peace at night to sleep. Don't look at what somebody is posting and think, oh they got everything but uh, their nights are filled with torment. Many can't sleep at night and they take medicines and drugs to stay up all night long and uh, they can't sleep, they can't find peace, they're tormented in their mind. So there is no peace other than what Allah sends to people. So they had pop stars who were super famous pop stars, he had to take medicine that would put him into a coma so he could sleep at night. So what happiness is that with all the wealth on, on, on earth that they amassed? So peace and true tranquility only comes from Allah Everything else may have the illusion of success and tranquility but we don't know what type of torment is taking place in their homes. So they posted something on this Rockefeller and said, oh look at the amassing of Rockefeller. He was so tormented that Allah put into his heart. He was tormented on a daily basis thinking he wouldn't have money the next day. He was so tormented by it that he couldn't eat, he, he had uh, suicidal tendencies and all his families inherited that shaitan. So they never could enjoy the wealth, they were tormented under the thought that tomorrow would end and they would go around pick up the crumbs out of the fear. How you could have fear that your money's going to finish tomorrow unless it's coming from Allah Allah releases, the shaitans attack the person and billion in the bank and he thinks tomorrow he's not going to have his food. As a result he can't eat, he couldn't sleep 
and all his family had suicides and all sicknesses of the same sickness, the same shaitan. So there's no peace for people, it's all an illusion the sense of peace. What Allah inflicts upon the mind and, and the body and the spirit of people if they come against the heavens. So true tranquility is the one whom struggles in Allah's way and Allah grants them a sakina because Allah's happy with them because where did your soul go at night? When you wash it goes back to the throne of Allah When Allah is happy with that servant He grants them a sakina, a tranquility that, come, O oh my the nafs that is, is pleased with me and I'm pleased with you, come to my presence. And that grants them an immense tranquility and, and beautific tajallis upon their souls, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is going to sleep similar to a portal? And when demonic portals open on dunya, what will be seen? We love you, Sayyidi. Thank you. <laughs> that was quick, huh? <laughs> sleep like a portal, and what are demonic portals? Sleep is, is a phase of death, so definitely is a portal. Means for the people who want to understand portals, means these are like uh, dimensions and openings. So sleep is, is a great opening and is the worshipness and a state of worshipness. And the sleep of an oppressor is ibadah, is worship because he bothers people when he's awake. So better when he sleeps then it becomes a, a mercy upon creation. Means that sleep has a tremendous blessing and is an immense opening. So the one whom washes and, and does all their worshipness and everything, the sleep can be a, a very beatific state. And many things will be dressed upon the soul of that servant. In tariqah there's not too much permission to see it because of the lofty abode. The ability to comprehend what's been seen and not to discuss it back onto the earth. So these souls from the tariqah then they're veiled as they go up. So like men in black they sleep, their memory will be washed before they come back down. So that not to discuss what was, what was uh, revealed of realities at that abode. So that, that's something different, so it has an immense power. And the portals of shaitan are everything. You go to a concert, that's a portal for shaitan. The television is a portal for shaitan. The radio is a portal for shaitan. So there's energies coming through their vibrations. It comes through music, comes through television, comes through everything. Now can you avoid those portals? No. Because this is modern world, we can't go live into the woods in the mountains. Then how do you counter it? Is by opening the heavenly portals. So you put on once, twice, three times a week the zikr in the room, in the living room. The same living room you're watching TVs on, put the YouTube on. So that the energy of the zikr is coming into the home, the portals from paradise come into the home. The beings that are coming from these zikrs, they're coming into the home and begin to wash the atmosphere, the energy of the room. Same with the nasheeds and salawat and Holy Qur'an that when you play them into the home they cleanse the energy that was brought by all the sounds and, and, and music that the children are listening to or people are listening to. So we can cleanse the environment and then you can begin to clean it like say, okay those things I don't want played in the house because it's all cursing. So that's going to bring horrific energies into the house. So then you know everything you start to wash and clean and, and sort of clarify what type of energies you want. So definitely everything is a, is a portal and an energy. And Prophet described the zikrs, they are the portals of paradise, circles of paradise. So immense, immense realities. If we could see, just see what types of lights and what type of spiritual be- beings come from these associations and what type of barakah and benefit they bring within our homes, within our food, within our souls, within every type of environment how they're blessed and how that environment completely changes by the tajallis of zikr and the tajalli of paradise inshaAllah. As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah. 
Can you please explain the importance of reciting Allahu, Allah Hay, Allah Hay Ya Kayyum seven times? Oh, where did you hear that one? That come from Z Z Zishan? <laughs> yeah. No, it's just uh, you should recite it. Allahu, Allah Hay, Allah Hay Ya Kayyum. It's uh, seven times onto your heart, Allahu, Allah Hayya, Allah Hayya Ya Qayyum. And this to open the, the heart. So when you want to sit and meditate and, and contemplate, Allahu, Allah Hayya, Allah Hayya Ya Qayyum. And that asking Allah to open the, the heart and the latayas of the heart inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, since instruments produce frequencies, mm. are these tools we can use to elevate our floor to go up? Instruments? Like what instruments? Because the hadith of Prophet is that the instruments are forbidden, right? Because again, for the same logic, the Prophet ﷺ is the master of all realities and he knows that these instruments, the vibration that they're going to cause most likely is not going to be heavenly vibrations because the overwhelming tide of music and music that you're going to be playing is not going to be salawats. So you're going to play dunya music that through your power of manifestation Dun, 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 dun. You're now bringing <laughs> that energy from your power of manifestation into your presence. So unless you're going to be playing salawat and, and you have a… somebody wrote that for you with that instrument then it, it's, it can be difficult. So that you have to be careful of because Prophet warned us. Why? And you see the hikmah of it because the overwhelming musical scoreboard is going to be very negative songs. So you're starting to play these frequencies and all these negative and maybe one or two salawat and then again all these negative, then these energies are going to affect until you know people get too caught up in it and they're so attracted by the sounds and they play more harder vibrations and lower tones and before you know that energy is affecting them. So I think the videos on understanding that so that you can answer that for yourself is what do they call the videos? Crimatic? Is it crimatic or cymatic? The science of, of sound and, and vibration? Cryometic? Cymatics? It's something with a S C Y, cymatic, cryometic, mm. something like that. <laughs> Google it. They take sound and they put it against materials. So they have these little foam balls, they put the sound on and it and it all of a sudden turns into a star, turns into different shapes and forms. Now they have videos where they're doing that on water and the water's changing forms based on the vibration. So just the understanding of that now their science is coming out and showing the direct relationship between vibration and the effect on form. So then th these vibrations they affect the blood because what's the water in humans is their blood, their cells, everything. One, ninety percent towards the negative because the most vibrations on the lowest frequencies are designed to cause a difficulty to the heart. So I think they mandated Rockefellers that music be played on certain notes and those notes were low and harmed the heart. Those same teachings will come out that certain vibrations can heal. So they'll play those vibrations to again heal the cells and the body, the, the blood which is all the water of the body. So those knowledges will come out. And until those come out then the zikr, the salawats, the nasheed have tremendous healing.
just the sound and the vibration of the nasheeds, it resets the cells and the blood and the body of insan and recalibrates the heart and all of the essential organs. Because once you're cleaning the blood through the chanting and through the zikr and through the energies and vibrations of the shaykhs that are coming out, that blood is going into the heart, recalibrating, cleansing the heart, cleaning the, the dirtiness on the blood. From the heart it'll push out clean blood to all 11 organs. So their breath, their energy, everything being cleansed. That's why we do the zikr. So when you watch those sciences, now you understand why Prophet described these are circles of paradise, they're healing. So they turn these things on and things move. So then imagine when you're saying, Allahu, what's happening with the body? What's happening with the energy of the body and the soul of the body? So very powerful, very powerful realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah <coughs> Sayyidi, what can we do when we try to lead by example by pressing the elevator up but a large part of the family is always pressing the elevator down? The children seem to be so affected by the surrounding. How do we shield the children from family pressing the elevator down that you cannot avoid such as anger, violence, bad words? Yeah, that, that becomes the, the great struggle. So then we see now that we have this, this understanding of the elevator, so this complex Islamic Sharia understanding, very simple as the elevator. So what do you do in your life to counter the elevator to go up? If you know you're what we call muhasaba, on a daily basis you take an accounting, right? So they would teach you, make an accounting every day, how many good you did, how many bad you did. So then you kind of figure on general basis for example that this family is going to push the button five times down today. So you want to counter them. You want to have the, the family doing at least ten floors up. So it means that you try to get them to pray together, sit down do an awrad with us, let's do hundred salawats today, let's do the ten Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheems today, let's do anything we can do to get this button to go up. Let's go on the weekend, we're going to go out and give food with the kids. Uh, all of what we're doing, try to get the children to do it. So that those hasanats and goodness means they went up 20 floors. So okay they're going to go down five or six floors throughout the week, it's going to be a given, nobody's going to continuously go up. So now they're doing drumming, get them to participate. As soon as they do the drumming then oh, well naturally they start to recite because they have to keep the rhythm of what they're drumming. So inevitably they're going to start to recite as they drum. Well now this is a huge hasanat for them. Maybe before they were just kind of like sitting there saying, what are we supposed to do there tonight for three hours? So then it, it picks up a tremendous blessing, do that at home. So everything that's being taught and, and how we're trying to motivate the adults is the same way the shaykh is doing, go ahead and give food so that you can get these barakahs and these blessings. Go and click and, and, and put out some of the articles so you can get these blessings. Same way you turn around to your children and say, well, okay why can't you do some of these salawats, why can't we sit down and do like a awrad, let's go and, and sit down a zikr night tonight, everybody come and sit and we'll go get like a ice cream or I'll give you an ice cream treat after. So you have to make something of it. So like with the men, you, you have to imitate the shaykh. So with the men we give them ice cream cake, right? <laughs> They get excited, shaykh's in town, we're gonna get ice cream cake, <laughs> right? Exact same system, so same, same logic, Allah promising you paradise. So you came into Islam thinking, oh we're gonna do these things and give paradise. So we said the same thing, then give your children a paradise in Ramadan. They want cash, so I'm going to give you cash for every prayer you did at home, teach your children to pray, give them cash, all the promising you paradise, what's the difference? Some people say, we can't pay the children to pray, so why Allah paying you to pray by giving you paradise? So make a system that you're going to get this cash but you don't get the cash, you get a credit for your allowance so that I can control what are you spending this on. 
Go buy at the SMC store. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy asa. This month you saved enough, you can get a ring. <laughs> but you know, you, you teach the children as Allah is teaching us and you motivate. If you see how the shaykh operates, he's trying to motivate people so that the religion is very fresh for them, very exciting for them, it becomes something beautific for them. And the same, same system inshaAllah that everybody should learn from that and, and make their children to be motivated. And again, you do the best you can till they're 15, 16, 17 and the rest is in Allah's hands. That at 17 they're going to come up with their own ideas and their understandings and you did the best you can with Allah and that's all that is, is, is possible. If at that point they decide they're going in different directions and they want to do this or that, at least we gave the foundation in life the best possible example. So with love, with good character and the establishment of that love is an immense anchor to always pull people back. Because if the relationship is hard and we know by 17 those devils become strong that try to pull the children away. If the anchor of love is not there, it's like a ship that's just waiting to escape. It's just waiting to go and never look back. But when the anchor is so strong with love, then always that love will call them back. Oh, I, I, this was you know my dad's way, I, I gotta go back to it, I, I gotta struggle to get back to that. So inshaAllah that we're always inspired to teach through love and build a very strong relationship based on love. Now they may not adhere but at least the love lock them in. InshaAllah with our good deeds and efforts and, and continuously always trying, the love pulls them back inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. الشفتي رسول كريم آمين بنيات ختم خوج جان إن شاء الله. Many people are asking for bayat. For bayat, yeah, إن شاء الله. So we make uh, intention for bayat in Ashbandi way under Sultan Al-Awliya Ma'an Shaykh Abdul Faiz Al-Daghistani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, under Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, under the barakah of Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani. InshaAllah fa'awuzu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-radeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna ladheena yubayyunaka yubayyunallah, yadallahi fawqaydihim. Fa man naqadhu fa inna man yaghusu ala nafsi, wa man awfa bima ahad, alayhi Allah fa sayyatun ajran azeem. Radhi billahi rabban wa islami deenan, wa bi Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa rasoolun wa nabiyun wa bi Qur'ani kitaban, wallahu man naqoolu wakeel. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Qabilna ba Sayyidina Sultan al-Awliya, Ma'an Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Fi Barakat Ma'an Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Wa Sayyir wa Saadatina, Wa Siddiqeen al-Fatiha. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haq Haqqu Ya Rabbi Ya Allah ila sharafa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala wa ashabi kiram wa ala mashayikhina fi tariqat al-nashbandiyyat al-aliyya khasatan ruhi imam tariqa qawta khaliqa shan nashban Muhammad Waisi al-Bukhari Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Maulana Shaykh Hisham Kabbani Shaykh Adnan Kabbani Shaykh Muhammad Adil Ma'abda Khaliq al-Khujtawani Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima Tizar alayhi salam, Sayyidina Imam al-Humugiya al-Husayni, Sayyidina Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Shamat al-Faddani, Abdul Rafu Yamani, Yusuf al-Siddiq, Imam al-Arafin, Lisan al-Mutaqalimeen, Arif Tayyar Maruf ibn Murhan, Barhan Kham Qawth al-Anam, Sahib al-Waq Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam wa sayyira wa saddatina wa siddiqeen al-Fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. 
InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.